my golf cart needs a new windshield. I, uh, I had one on there that I had built about oh, six or seven years ago, and it worked great for a long time. It just uh, kind of fell victim to a couple of unfortunate mishaps, and uh, instead of repairing it, I'm just going to go ahead and, and build a new one. And I'm going to build this one pretty much exactly the same way I did the first one, and I'm going to use uh, PVC pipe and plexiglass. Okay, so I'm going to build the frame for this windshield out of PVC. Uh, you know, why not metal? Well, frankly, my metal working skills ain't that great. So PVC it is. And, uh, you know, it's cheap and easy to work with. So uh, now building a frame out of PVC, uh, not, maybe not as simple as it sounds, at least not for the look that I'm going for. So what I want is I want the frame rails to be this size. This is one inch PVC. But then in order to you know, connect pieces, you're using you know elbows or couplers or whatever. And those, the uh, diameter, the outside diameter of those is obviously bigger than the pipe itself. And that's not the look I'm going for. Um, and it's also the functionality is going to be inhibited because I got you know, plexi that has to go all the way across here. And it's not an even surface. So... What I'm going to do is build the frame out of three quarter. When I use these three quarter inch elbows, again, those are bigger than the uh, the pipe that they're connected to. But when I take my one inch PVC and slide it over the top of the three quarter, right up to these elbows, those have the same or really, really, really close to the same diameter so when they connect it's going to look a little bit more seamless around my whole frame now here's the issue three quarter pvc will not go inside of one inch pvc it's just a tad too big quick trip over the table saw and what i did i just run through one side, not both. Yeah, see, it doesn't come all the way through. What that does is gives me a little bit of flex. That little bit of a flex allows me to uh, squeeze this and get that inside the one inch. And then on the end that's going to have a coupler on it, like this one here, I leave it just a little bit shy. And then that way, that, uh, that joint still fits nice and tight. And if you try to put it on this end like this here, it's going to be pretty loose because you're, you know, just just not. So, yeah, leave a little bit shy, and then that still fits on nice and tight. But the one inch will slide over all the way up to here, and it'll look like all one diameter, even around the corners. Just assembling some of the components here, and what I'm doing, taking the uh, the, the elbows and putting those on the three quarter first. And then uh, sometimes I gotta kind of pound those on the ground to get them to seat all the way. And then after that, I'll take that whole piece and run it down inside the one inch. And as I run that up to the coupler, sometimes it'll get a little tight there uh, where the three quarter wasn't split all the way through. And so those sometimes need a little persuasion as well. The uprights of the frame uh, on the bottom, we're going to have an end cap on each side. And so I just have a separate piece of that three quarter that I'm using to connect those. And the same as the other joints, I've got a piece of three quarter that split uh, almost the full length, just leaving the very end. That way the connectors fit snug. I drive this cart year round, going around the farm, getting stuff done. And uh, when it's cold outside, uh, the wind chill, you know, is obviously amplified in a open moving vehicle which is why I want this windshield and another reason I want the windshield is because the cart just looks dumb without it and what I'm building here though is I guess you'd consider it or call it a a sport windshield uh, which means it only comes up about I don't know 16 inches or so up off the cowl and even though it's only a half height windshield it really does help a lot you know it keeps that uh, cold wind from uh, 
you know, just what it feels like it's just going right through you, you know. So I get a lot of wind in my face still, obviously, but uh, that doesn't really bother me. So as long as it's not uh, chilling every other part of my body, then it's all good. Okay, so after watching, you know, some of the assembly there of me taking these uh, long tubes and shoving them all the way down through these other long tubes, you might, you know, ask why, why don't you just, uh, you know, make a, a bunch of these, you know, uh, little short pieces that are split on one end, um, and then that way, it's essentially, it's just like an adapter that would adapt, you know, a three-quarter inch elbow to, oops, a uh, one-inch piece of PVC, as opposed to, you know, having this, you know, inside pipe run all the way down through the outside one. And uh, the answer is uh, rigidity, um, especially, say, for the top rail. The top rail of that frame is three and a half feet long, and at that length, you're going to get a lot of flex out of that PVC. And so when you run these, uh, you know, full length, the inside all the way through, you know, the outside tube, it's going to add a lot more strength and rigidity. It's not going to flex so much. So that's why. The way this is designed is that the, the lower upright runs along this uh, panel here. And then there's a 45 degree angle. And then the frame comes up above the cowl at, uh, you know, about this angle. Now that forward rake on the lower part's about, I'm going to say 15 degrees. And then therefore our, our windshield angle ends up about, 30 I'm guessing before I put this on the cart though I'm gonna get rid of this printing that's on the pipe here and the best way to get rid of this I found is just to use one of those foam sanding blocks uh, that you use for like uh, drywall and uh, it's spongy and then that way it conforms to the radius of the pipe and it comes off pretty quick removing the printed barcodes takes a little bit more work but those eventually come off as well a lot of times when I go back and I revisit a project I did years ago, I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out what I did or you know, how I did this or why I did this or most of the time it's usually I don't remember doing this. Anyway, I'm looking at these two large holes here which I'm thinking are probably the original mining locations for the roof when I first bought the cart. It had a roof on it and I took it off and then uh, you know put the uh, short windshield on instead. So what I'm thinking is that uh, I probably use those two holes as the initial mining locations and because they're large I have a little bit of adjustment in there and then after I got everything straight the way I liked it I then ran uh, screws through these uh, smaller holes which basically locks it in place and it can't move uh, you know in the slots after that. At least I think that's probably what I did but shit who knows. These rails are secured from the inside with screws and uh, I'm using those uh, two larger holes initially and um, this, uh, this support doesn't have to be this long, uh, it really only has to be about half that length to provide the proper support but um, I think running them all the way down to the floorboard actually looks better. Uh, I've got the left and right sides on, they're loosely affixed for now until after I get the top rail on then I can make adjustments. All right, looking at it here, the uh, looks like the driver side is a little bit low, and uh, in which case that's where those enlarged holes come in handy, where I have a little bit room for adjustment. Okay, time to fit the glass. Actually, it's not glass; it's uh, plexi. Actually, it might not even be plexiglass brand uh, clear acrylic. It might be some other brand, or it could be a polycarbonate. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm just going to call it Plexi from here on out. Anyway, I'm just going to use my old piece. Uh, it's not in perfect condition by any means, but uh, in this area or in this time of COVID, it, it might be in short supply. And even if not, it's probably high priced. Even before COVID, I thought that plexiglass was extremely high priced for what it is. As a matter of fact, it, it might even be more expensive than regular glass. And you notice that black strip along the bottom of the plexi there, that is just a piece of uh, electrical uh, cord insulation I split and right along the bottom because that plexi 
it's flexible and driving around it'll bounce and you know, rattle against the, the cowl there so that little piece of rubber along the bottom just keeps it from making noise. That's the alternative to actually putting a cross member across the bottom of the frame as well, which I didn't want to do. And as I'm screwing in the windshield here, that screw is going through, you know, not only the, sh the plexi sheet, but also the one inch PVC on the outside and the three quarter on the inside, pretty much holding everything together. And in other areas where I'm not screwing a sheet to it, uh, such as the 45 degree elbows uh, right there at the base, I'll add screws to those as well, right at the coupler to keep everything together also. I use these pan head uh, sheet metal screws and they're soft tapping but they're really intended to tap through thin metal and not thick PVC so I drill pilot holes. Now, right now this is a little bit flimsy as is especially if somebody tries to grab onto it to uh, you know get in or out or whatever so the previous windshield I had this strut in here to uh, firm it up a little bit now this was like I don't think it's like a quarter inch CPV or something like that and uh, it, it worked okay but I think I needed something beefier and so I'm gonna go with the half inch PVC this time and with the previous one I just cut these at an angle and they made it up pretty good even though it didn't exactly fit the profile uh, you know the radius of the of the frame uh, this one's gonna be a little bit more obvious if I just cut that and try to put it on so what I need to do is try to like shape the inside of that so that it's kind of a you know, dished out and therefore it conforms better to that pipe and probably I'll just use like a Dremel or something like that after I've done uh, cutting the angle. And just like I did with the other pieces I'm just using that uh, spongy sanding block to get rid of the printing on the pipe. And I haven't tried this with like uh, like paint thinner or mineral spirits or something it might just wipe right off too that might be an easier way to go also if it works all right so yeah installed now and uh fully and it's a uh, not super duper rigid you're not gonna you use it to pull yourself up out of your seat to get out of the cart but you can definitely use it as you know a handle to stabilize yourself but if you pull on it too hard yeah something's gonna give but uh it's definitely sturdier than the last one uh, just because of the size of this strut and also the configuration that's longer and it comes up higher on the strut as well so you know not to mention that uh it looks good uh, it looks a lot better than without a windshield at all. Not that this is a, you know, an award-winning show cart or anything like that. That's probably the best looking part of the whole cart is the windshield now. <laughs> but uh, it's functional too. You know? It definitely helps keep the, the wind off most of you, uh, you know, when you're tooling around in the fall and the winter. And uh, yeah, the last one I had, I had painted it all black. And... Uh, you know what? I like the white, you know, I got a white seat on it, so I got that on there too. Kind of balances it front and back, right? So, it works. 